Annie, you've been a patient for many years. What's your impression of caring medical in general? Caring medical is the medical facility, the only one I completely trust. Um, I brought, I, I of course have come here multiple times, but I brought my mother here. I brought my nephew here. Um, I brought friends here. The, you are the best diagnostician I've ever known. And, and I've been around the medical community a fair amount and with my own personal injuries. But carrying medical, they're, you're, you're in sync, your, your staff's well-trained. Um, caring is um, an understatement. Um, I've always felt every time I've come here as though I'm the only patient in your office at the given time. Um, and obviously that's not true. You have seven rooms going on and, um, and then you have your other office up north. And I, I just have always felt as though it's been a comprehensive visit. Not just my knee, but how is that affecting my hip and my foot and what's my diet like? And, and um, a couple months ago you brought up my hormones, and which wasn't even, really isn't even supposed to be on your radar, but, but uh, you brought it up and it's been helpful to me. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're. Now, you and I, how long have we known each other? <laughs> how long have we known each other? I first came to your office in Oak Park from Cincinnati. I drove up there um, July of 2009. Yeah, wow. Well, almost 10 years. I know, I know. And uh, your and attire and your bow ties have, have, have uh, yeah. stayed, stayed the course. Um, you know, Doc, I, I know a lot of your habits. I know your thought process. I know when you'd start doing that little dance, your, your head's twirling and thinking. And, um, and, and I trust you. You know, you stay on what I've noticed too, what's been fun to watch, even when I haven't had injuries, um, how far in nine years, how you keep staying on the, on the forefront. You keep studying and you keep getting new machinery in here and you keep pushing your boundaries in terms of learning what's going on and, and, um, and staying with it and not being afraid of who gets prolotherapy and who doesn't. Yeah, I just want the first people to get better. That's the main Right. Thing. But, I mean, but, but I mean, the other medical professionals around you uh, it, who raise an eyebrow or poke fun at the process, I'm living proof. Um, I was going through the other day how many different body parts you've tweaked for me and fixed. And there has to be at least eight or nine different ones. Like what? Uh, what have you um, Well, I first came in here with both rotator cuffs and costoconditis, the sternum. You've also worked on my neck. Um, you worked on my rib number four, my Achilles tendon, my left knee, my my thumbs. Um, that was a biggie because the thumbs really influence yeah. a lot. Um, but the one that I am that really says it for you is that I brought my mother to you, my 80 year old mother who was convinced she needed a hip replacement. And within two treatments, she was playing golf again. And um, I wouldn't have brought her if I didn't completely trust you. But did you think we were going to get her better? Oh, I knew it. Okay. She didn't know okay. it. She she right. she um, humored me. Yeah. To um, she, yeah. she just she made me a promise that she would test you out before getting a hip replacement, and she didn't need it. Yeah, that's interesting because. It's interesting because over the years, you know, we've had a lot of skeptics come in as patients, like, you know, just because their spouse got treated or their child got treated. And the thing is, and you know this, like if the bones are moving too much and the person has instability and the only treatment that tightens a stretched out ligament is prolotherapy, the person is going to do well with prolotherapy, whether they believe it or ligament not. Ligament laxicity, right, yeah, is yeah. the cause of most chronic pain. Um, so like, say for the skeptic, since we're talking about that, so okay. what would you say to the skeptic? Like, weren't you skeptical before you first came? Me? 
Yeah, first came. No, I wasn't. Oh, you were. Okay. I wasn't skeptical. I knew. Okay. I was embarrassed in my own head why I didn't come to you sooner. Oh, okay. Um, but for the skeptics, I just, um, the ones that I bring, mm -hmm. I put enough doubt in their head about the simplicity of what is really being repaired that they can't find an argument against it. So they, okay. when they realize that the worst that can happen is that it doesn't work, they're open to it. Okay. I brought that Marine in who had two, we started with just his shoulder. Then it went both shoulders, both knees, his big toe and his neck. And he was, a, he was probably the biggest skeptic. And how did uh, he do? Oh, he's, he's great. He's, he's, he touts it now okay. with, with um, his buddies. Um, so you're saying, let's just say trying to make it in common language for somebody who's skeptical, that would you say that, quoting you correctly, that pain obviously is coming from some injured, torn, or weakened tissue, and all prolotherapy does, in essence, is stimulate repair. Correct. So, and thus, once it gets repaired, well, right. I mean, you're you're creating the inflammatory response, and and it just makes sense. Like, what do, what does a raccoon do do in nature? They're they're not putting ice on it, right? They're not taking ibuprofen. So, you know, you're triggering the body's natural response, and then I need to help you out. You know, I need to eat right. I need to use my head with my movements. I need to give it time to heal. Mm -hmm. I'm just, it's not going to go in there and just use super glue and right. But so let the body heal. And yeah, and your responsibility is obviously to put the right amount of force on it. And some of your injuries, I've said, Annie, you got to like put no force. And right. You have to be careful. And other times, it's like, no, it's time to go play golf. Exactly. Or or exactly. Or... Yeah, we've we've I've had situations of both, and some things we've actually um, immobilized for a little while, yeah. and other things I can go right back to it. Um, the Achilles tendon, in my case, I could I could start right away, you know, with um, light walking and then then running. With the knee, it was a little bit different. I had, with the tendon on the knee, I had to be careful. I had to immobilize it. But the neck, neck was, and then also I learned, I pay more attention with my own alignment. So I'm not, I raised my computer up. If I look at my, my um, cell phone screen, I keep it up. Perfect. And, um, and I, I feel good, I feel good. Did you, uh, for people who aren't familiar with caring medical, like, and, and even myself, you know, like, uh, how would you describe the office, like professional office, or like how would you describe when it? When I first found you online, I lived in Cincinnati, and your office was in Oak Park. There was actually a prolotherapist two miles from my house. Oh, okay. And I w went to that office, and I wanted to interview the doctor. And I sat around in the waiting room, and nobody was happy. Oh, really? You know, the patients weren't okay. convinced. So that's when I thought, well, okay, I'm going to the guy up in Oak Park that um, is the most prolific writer, has, has his names on every prolotherapy article out there just about. And, um, you know, you go into the office, immediately you're greeted, you're, you're, you're um, attended to in the individual room. Um, somebody is always reviewing your history, keeping it up to date. Um, they know what's going on. And like somebody like me, you know, my, my chronology of parts is almost like an index, right? So um, I've always felt well cared for and, and attended to. And then we have talked that, you know, you and I, we've known each other, you know, nine years. So you obviously have seen other clients of mine, like obviously in the waiting room. Right. So what would be, what's your impression of those? Like what, what would you say that in average they There's like the doctor, they like the Oh, office, the they, things they have to say about you in the waiting room. Um, they all want to have their own needle injection. 
you know, for you. But <laughs> <laughs> what goes around? Yeah, goes around. exactly, exactly. No, you know, you get the sense people come in and they're hurting, right? And and I chit chat with them. Well, they they all have a sense of optimism, and that the long train of chronic disappointment by other clinicians. by other clinicians, system. right? By other clinicians has finally come to an end. Um, when they come here, right? I okay. I've met people in your waiting room from Germany, Norway, Sweden, uh, South Africa. Um, that's just the ones that are coming off the top of my head. And it's, um, you know, they, they come from everywhere to see it, Doc. And that means they've exhausted their own facilities where they live locally. Um, Let me ask you this, because this is inter it's an interesting question. Think about this. Like, why do you think somebody would have to come so far to come here to get help? Like, like, what is it? Like, what, what right. is it really? Like, think about somebody from South Africa or Norway, all the different clinicians that they could go to between Norway and Florida or Chicago. Like, I what is it? I, what, what is it? I know. Think? I've thought about that. Because yeah, when yeah. I promote you to my friends, they're thinking, what is so special about carrying medical? And um, it's it's the comprehensive care and also i think that you you your you and your team have put your egos aside and gotten down to the root cause of what the pain is it's it's a loose ligament or loose tissue and it's like is it that simple and and all these other people want it to be so much more complicated but it's just <laughs> tighten up the joints, you know, and, and the pain stops. <laughs> no, it's I hate to even laugh, but no, you're right. It's like they got it so complicated, like MRIs and all this stuff, and it's like, and you know, you and I have had many yeah. conversations about, you know, when it when it when it when there's instability in the in the ligaments which connect the bone are stretched out. That the extra motion then, of course, causes the tendons and the ligaments, the other ligaments to get stretched out and injured. And then eventually, you know, the cartilage cells die and meniscal cells die and then the, the joint degenerates. So if you want to stop the degenerative process, all you have to do, all you have to do is just tighten the ligament. You know, I tell friends, like, remember when you were younger and bought those those cheap um cabinets or dresser with made out of particle board and you try to take the screw out one times too many and it gets it, it just dangles there right so it's it's getting the injections is kind of like the old trick of putting the toothpick into the hole and tightening it up and all of a sudden things start working again yeah and um but it makes it's just i i think i'm hoping that there's a segment of the world medical field that is starting to swing back, the pendulum swing back. And um, you'll always have plenty of business, but I hope your philosophy spreads. You know, it's... it's yeah. And how would, you, how would you summarize the philosophy? What's the philosophy that you would like spread across the globe as it relates to pain or prolotherapy? Let the body, help the body do its own healing. You know, if it's by PRP or if it's by stem cell or, um, you know, dextrose injections, creating that inflammatory response, get out of our own way. And, you know, you, you my observation has been that you study human nature and you know, like when you have a boot on, your hip's going to start hurting after a while. But, um you know, it doesn't mean you get the knife out. You know, we, you're so in tune to letting the body do its, its thing and studying what can we do to help it rather than, you know, yeah. change it. Now, you've had a lot of prolotherapy over yes, the course I have. of nine years. Then what about people who are afraid of needles? Like, you know, like, you know, because that is a there, concern of some is. people. So what would you say to those folks? Hmm. Well, 
having having not have that fear, but I do have a dear friend that does. Uh, you have to weigh the fear of the needle versus surgical options. And, um, you know, no surgery comes out is, is foolproof. I know that you have methods here that will help them with that. They yeah. can be put out if they have to be, so they don't even see the needle. Yeah. Um, I've never, I don't have a whole lot of experience with that, but I certainly wouldn't let that hinder me from getting this type of treatment because it's just an afternoon of shots, you know, well, not an afternoon, but you know, yeah. 10 minutes of shots. You're right. Yeah. Um, so in other words, like what you would say in regard to the person who's afraid of needles, just know that generally the treatments go very quickly. Oh, they do very and, fast. And, and to get a lifetime of pain relief, because some of your areas, like I treated years ago, like they're completely fine. Like imagine That's right. if you didn't get prolotherapy. Oh. No, but you know what I mean? Like, so, oh. so in other words, even if prolotherapy hurt a lot, getting it, it's only a few times or five times or whatever. It's then, minutes. Yeah, it's minutes, minutes compared to like, you know, hours and years of Right. Pain. And, you know, it's like somebody I know had a knee replacement. And it's, you know, it took them a whole year to bounce back. And, um, you know, the fear of the needles is like, okay, you know, let's blindfold you bringing in if you're that... Yeah. But it, it's just minutes, and um, and when you take the pre pre treatment um, medication, you don't even know what's going on, really. You know. Yeah. It it's it seems so short sighted to let that fear over overrule yeah. your decision making process. You know how like you know you're an athlete, you know, and maybe you could explain some of the athletic things you do. How do you determine as an athlete who's somebody who's had prolotherapy, like when an injury needs prolotherapy? Well, I have learned over the years coming to you that it's much better to come earlier in the injury process rather than waiting until it's dangling by a thread. So when I have a repetitive motion, let's say my, my rotator's acting up, and it happens a couple of times you know, three rounds of golf each time, it, it then it hurts afterwards. I think, oh, it's probably time to go get a tweak job. And it would be just one visit. Okay. And then it's good for a couple more years. My thumbs, first time you treated my thumbs, I, I couldn't open the door. And you treated them with PRP, one treatment, and it lasted more than five years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so it, I had them treated in Oak Park. And then down here at Fort Myers. So really what you're saying is having already had confidence in Prolo because you've had a lot of different body parts treated successfully that if you have an, a pain that's consistent, even if it's just that a few times, good. right? Then, then you know that it, it's not going to get better on its own. Well, and, that's, that's it. And yeah. the orthopedic model is that, no, it's not bad enough yet. You know, it puts you on... Um, anti-inflammatories of some nature, then wait, do physical therapy, then you wait until it's so degenerated, now we'll do the knee replacement or do the surgery. And meanwhile, between this point and that point, you have this loss of, of quality of life, right? right? So now I've learned, you know, and I encourage my friends that if if it's, you, you know the difference between a sore muscle and something isn't quite right, you know, or something's, something's coming on. So that's when I call and I come down and, and yeah. I get a treatment. And now, then. Now, when you do have pain, do you use pain pills or no? And, and why not? Or why do you use them? I don't use pain pills because, um, I like knowing what's going on okay. with my body. Um, I don't use, I don't have any anti-inflammatory in my house. Um, I do have Tylenol. Um, Did you used to use an anti-inflammatory? Oh my God, before yes. Before I saw you, before oh, like yes. 2009. So how, like. Oh, holy cow, I was like, on them all the time. Okay. And the and thing is, is that when I stopped taking them, it, the pain didn't change, you okay. know? So I'm just doing, mess, mucking up my system, okay. right? 
And, then, and I had cortisone shots, and that didn't help, and that was, I learned. Since learning about prolotherapy, you know that you don't want to inhibit the inflammatory response. No, I that's don't. How the, yeah, that's that's how the body is. works, right? Right. right. So um, when the very first time you treated me, you got that point across, and then for the first two weeks, I was in and out of my hot tub for 20 minutes to bring the heat on. Yeah. Everybody's tempted, oh, put ice on it. And no, 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 no ice. Ice is only in the cocktail, right? Um, <laughs> That's good. Right? Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> That's funny. So, you know, no, heat is, is good. And, and I followed the instructions to a T, and I got better. Now, obviously, you're really happy you got prolotherapy. What do you think would have happened if you never found prolotherapy? Oh, boy. Yeah, what would have happened? Oh, boy. Um, like, you know, 2009. So imagine yeah. if you actually never found prolotherapy. Where, where, what, do you, what do you think? Like, uh, obviously, right now, you look spectacular. Yeah. You're active. Like, what, what, I would what have would... had multiple surgeries. Okay, There's like, no, surgery, no question. What surgery I would have had surgery again on at least one rotator cuff. Um, on more than likely my my neck c6 and 7 would have been fused um my tmj they wanted to do a joint replacement um the lumbar the in, sacroiliac i don't know what they would have done there because but that was a mess um i had been rear-ended by a semi on the highway and my head went through the back window of, of a pickup truck so you know it was just from my hips up to my temples was a mess um and i'm sure they would have fused somewhere in my spine um because you you shot up and down yeah um the spine it tightened it up i was i used to i used to tie my jaw together Mm -hmm. I used to wear knee pads because I couldn't sit in a chair. And so, like, if I went to a restaurant, I'd slip off the edge of the chair and just kneel and sit at the, and eat at the table. Um, I always had ice somewhere at that prior to having Prolo. Um, and I lived in three to six hour cycles. Okay. So I needed, if I was to go to my parents house for dinner i calculated backwards how much time i needed to yeah. rest so that i wouldn't look yeah. depleted when i was there um because my mu because with the ligaments stretched my muscles constantly went into muscle spasms yeah. i used to sleep in ice water literally fill the tub about three inches dumped my ice tray out and would submerge myself and try to get some sleep that way. I, they had me on 26 pills a day. Um, I stopped all of those. Um, I locked myself inside of my car. They had me on so many pills. Um, I, I feel so good now, you know, I, 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 I hurt my left knee because my drive went too far on the golf course, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it, besides right, that, right. Doing I, I am. Yeah. The, you know, this is just a part under repair. I know it's going to get back to where it's supposed to be. I'm not going to need yeah. surgery. I saw what somebody had a tendon surgery and it's, it doesn't work. You know, it's, it's 32 week rehab and so many other things can go wrong. No, I have no, I have no doubt that this is going to, uh, heal. The, uh, you know, when you have chronic pain, and you probably were getting close to the point of feeling hopeless. I used to set my alarm clock to convince, tell myself, you're not going to do anything permanent until the alarm goes off. Then I would reset it. I, I read the Hemlock Society book. I knew how to do it. I knew to take Dramamine before taking excess pills. Um, I, I had like you were getting close. Oh, I was getting I was getting, getting close. So so you you can testify to somebody who might see this video. The despair of it's not just the chronic pain. It's that you don't see a way out of the well. It it's that you don't know you don't see a future for yourself, a, a life for you yourself. Hopeless. You do.
and you just don't know where your life's going. I mean, it's like, I remember the highlight of my day was when the mailman would deliver junk mail because you slowly become um, more reclusive. Yeah. And, and now, you know, I have a great social life. I'm outside all the time. Um, I'm active. Um, so for somebody who's like just amazingly despaired, don't, doesn't want to try another thing, they don't want to be disappointed, like why would you say that they should consider coming to caring medical and receiving prolotherapy? I was in that spot. I was um, every objective physician said that, okay, this is the best you're going to be. It's just going to go down from here even more so. You, but in my heart of hearts, I knew there was a healthy Annie trying to get out. Now, for the person that is so full of despair, I encourage them to to try it one more time. Don't don't throw in the towel yet. Come come to Caring Medical, and relax, because you're in good hands. The healing process will start, and the tension of and the fear of the next doctor visit is, is gone. Um, the healing starts now. And you get things working properly, tightened up, and all of a sudden the pain stops, and then the anxiety goes down, and the pain improves a little bit more, and let, so now it's, it, your personality and the pain are like this. That's, that's a good example. You're welcome, Doc. Thank you.